Well, as any other community, we have had uh, young people who have passed away. We had one case that was quite well publicized of a high school student uh, crossing Gulf Road, and unfortunately uh, being killed in the process. But there are many other cases where children have died much, much too young, as any child dying is much too young. And one of the village trustees, Ed Frank, actually uh, brought up forward, why doesn't the village put something on our grounds? Uh, the Children's Memorial uh, was an idea that came to me uh, as I was driving down Higgins Road. And I passed a spot where a little boy about four years old had been hit by a car and killed. And there was a cross on the side of the road. And I thought to myself, you know, that cross is going to be gone in two or three weeks and nobody will ever remember this little boy. And I didn't even know what his name was. And I thought, what a shame that here's a little boy and he'll never be remembered. And the idea came to me at that point that we've lost a lot of kids in Hoffman Estates through sickness, through accidents, whatever. And I said, why don't we have a children's memorial? You know? He said, ma'am, you need to get to the hospital as soon as possible because he's been in a crash. That was one horrendous sight to see a 12-year-old laying there. Well, it that was a hurting time, you know, at that time. It's not like you only just lose a child. It's just like, you know, lost your The whole family be affected with that. They gave us a diagnosis of acute lymphocytic leukemia. So she began intense uh, chemotherapy in 1990 for the bone marrow transplant. Uh, she died basically not from the leukemia, but from the effects of the bone, bone marrow transplant. I had lost uh, a nephew when he was 21, and I, I remembered what my sister went through, uh, trying, to rem trying to bear up. And to the extent that she wouldn't even come out to visit me because I had two boys and they would, she was upset. We started a commission to determine a location and also to determine the parameters of where the um, memorial should be and also how we're going to pay for this memorial. We had to raise funds to do it. Um, we have some very beautiful statues of young children at play, reading a book, playing baseball. And we have a nice sitting area. And one of the ways that money was raised was to selling bricks with the name of the lost one and uh, the date of birth, the date of loss, or whatever the family may want to put on that. So the commission was very important to be able to do this. They raised the money, they found the location, and they um, also uh, came up with the qualifications to be there. It couldn't have been done without the late uh, Park District Commissioner Scott Trippon, who actually designed the memorial. He is an engineer, and uh, he was a major player in raising the funds for this commission. He was the chairperson of it. I, I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a place and a tribute to all these little children that we can remember them and we honor them and we say, hey, you were, you were amongst us and we're sorry that you're not here anymore. I think that's what it means. When I read in the paper about the memorial here in Hoffman Estates that they were going to begin, so I called over and said, you know, our daughter Kim, we would like to memorialize the spirit that Kim was able to give all of us during her illness and that. So that is one of the reasons that we asked if we could buy a brick to put in the memorial garden. It's really comforting because I can come by here at any time. Normally I spent my time at the gravesite, honestly. I was there every single day. That's the closest I felt that I could, you know, be near him. You know, it's like a hole in uh, your, your heart, you know. It's a very peaceful setting. We wanted to have some place where people could come and grieve and commune with, the, with their loved ones, their lost one. It's a very beautiful setting and I think it is very peaceful and you'll see people out there all the time. Still, still hard to... Even though it's been 23 years, it will be 23 in December, you know, uh, she was a very vital part of our family and we remember her every day. But I think that uh, what the memorial does is it does give people a very nice setting, a peaceful setting to sit and contemplate, remember their loved one, commune with the person if they can, think about them, love them, remember their life.
you miss them, but you also have to remember the joy that they gave you in their short life. And I think that was really what we really wanted to accomplish. It's a very beautiful memorial. It's surrounded by flowers and bushes. It's well maintained by our public works department and uh, we're very proud of it. And I think we're very proud of the peace that is given to people in our community. Well, just like we met this young woman here, it was very significant, you know, to, to think that, you know, we're not the only ones who have gone through this, you know. Um, many other people, and perhaps some who are not even memorialized here, or who know about the memorial, you know, it means that, you know, you, you have a link, you know, because uh, our children are not with us physically anymore. So you do have a link, and you can talk to them about why you miss your child. It was probably the most traumatic thing that happened in our lives when you lose a, you know, a daughter or a son. And to have the stone in her name, uh, like Mary it's said, it gives mm -hmm. closure and then knowing that she's not forgotten. I want to thank all of you for coming. This is um, the fifth anniversary of our Children's Memorial. It's hard to believe it was five years ago, but uh, it's coming November that this was dedicated. This was a long-standing project, as uh, some of the members of the committee can, can attest. Uh, it was a great child of one of our village trustees, Ed Frank, and uh, he spent years pursuing it, and it finally got done. It's a good job, Ed. The point is, we like we wanted to have a place of uh, contemplation for people who had the misfortune to have lost a child could come and maybe feel a little peace in a beautiful setting and, and remember their loved one. And uh, it's, it's so great to see all of you here today. We really want to thank uh, the choir for coming out. And everybody who does remember somebody, because it speaks to all of us that um, so many people do. Without any uh, further ado, I'd uh, like to introduce uh, Ed Frank, who uh, is responsible for this, Ed. Uh, good morning. It's difficult to realize that five years have, have passed since we first dedicated this memorial to all our children <coughs> that our community has lost over the years. Too often, those memories are left to families and just a few friends. Here in Hoffman Estates, we want to remember all the children we have lost and have moved on to that special place upstairs. They live in our memories and in this special place that we've set aside for them. Come and visit this place often. It's here for the loved ones left behind and for those who loved and lost their dear ones. It's also a place where anyone in the community can come, sit, and reflect. It's here for all past and present. Uh, I'm going to add a few words, but about six years ago, I was driving on Higgins Road going east, and as I passed the intersection where golf and Higgins go, I saw a white, white cross on the side of the road, and I had to remember that a little boy had been hit and killed at that spot. And it got me thinking about all the little children that we've lost through sickness, accident, or whatever in the community. And it prompted me, I guess, to pursue having this place dedicated and built for us. Thank you very much. Shall we pray? Father, this morning we know that you've reminded us that the kingdom belongs to the little children. And when we look at these wonderful statues, we catch why. The playfulness, the adventuresomeness, the absolute trust, the eyes that take everything in, the ears that listen so intently, the little arms that wave and hug and the little feet that run as fast as they can run. And we're reminded that such is the kingdom. 
So on this day, it's fitting that your wind blows through this place, reminding us that your spirit is always here, reminding us that your spirit of your children in the kingdom is always here. So bless us this day as we remember and make us a blessing to someone this day and all days that you give us. And give us this day the privilege to see your world through the eyes of a child. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Very pleased to have the Hoffman States High School Choir with us today under the direction of Matthew Schlesinger. Schlesinger. Hoffman Estates High School is our flagship high school and uh, I appreciate the fact that every time we have an event and we want participation from the school that they're always there. Thank you very much and thank you Mr. Schlesinger. Now it's my great honor to introduce uh, Dr. Monica Savidra who is the Assistant Director of our Health and Human Service Department. Doctor. Thank you all for being here today. We're going to take a moment to honor and remember those that have passed away with the reading of the names. Angela Reeves, Bill Donlan, Carol Callahan, Cadence Renee Stocka, Daniel Aaron Fox, David Allen Halquist, David W. w. Solarier, Dean Redman, Deanna Lynn Gray, Deborah M. Urban, 
Deborah A. Napanelli, Elliot G. Cooper, Eric James Finneran, Gavin Eckelbarger, Howard Weisberg, James M. Sexton, Kelsey Kate DeBoer, Kim A. Noonan, Christine Troja, Laura Del Medico, Laura Engelhart, Lucas A. Musiala, Maddox A. Joseph, Melinda Ryan Cohen, Michael B. Delamoro, Michael S. Delarco, Michael Shy Silver, Nancy Ann McCormick, Pooja Adhia, Rachel Caroline Rosmanitz, Robert Brilliant, Robert Morris, Stephanie Monique Doan, Stephen Shiola, Teresa Fluter, Timothy J. Weiss, and for all those who aren't named here. Thank you, Doctor. There's someone who's with us here in spirit who is no longer, unfortunately, with us physically, and that's Scott Japan who designed this memorial and put a lot of work into the committee and uh, cajoled a lot of people to donate money to buy these statues and get this done. And at this time, uh, Ross Mirzo is going to do a little remembrance of uh, Scott. As Mayor said, there was a lot of people influential in, in getting this project off the ground. Uh, one of them was Scott Trapon, who's unfortunately not able to be here with us today. In his memory and in the memory of everyone read out loud and, and everyone else that's lost, let's have a moment of uh, silent prayer, please. Thank you. Now we have our balloon celebration. I guess we can't let the balloons go, but doctor, but what's going on here? Today we are gathered together for one reason. Each of our lives has been impacted by the loss of a precious child. At the Children's Memorial, we honor life by providing comfort, care, and compassion to one another. Today we are all united by the love we have for those we have lost. This balloon memorial symbolizes that unity. When we pull to release the balloons, they will not go up in the sky. They will rise into the air and gather together. This represents the commonalities between us all. Today we are not separate from one another. We are a community of individuals who share in each other's grief, heartache, fond memories, and hope for the future.
again, I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank the village trustees and our great village clerk and uh, Hoffman Estates own state representative Fred Crespo is here. Uh, I know that you're not on the program, Reverend, but I found that uh, any time uh, we have a solemn gathering, there seems to be one person who can uh, maybe give us a little perspective and a little comfort. And I dial E for Eaton when, I, when I'm feeling that way. Reverend Eaton, can you, can you close for us? One of the hardest things I ever had to do in my ministry was I did the funeral for my little niece who made it all of three weeks. And the Lord didn't bless us with a nice day like today. It was in November about 30 years ago and it was stormy and rainy and any minute we thought the rain would probably change to snow, the first real heavy snow of the year. And as I was driving home, there was a spot in which the sky opened just a little bit. And I thank the Father because that was his remem remembrance that as he opens the skies, he opens them for little Lindsay too. So today, as we go forth from this place, let's go forth as people that look to the sky and ask the Father to show us the openings. Shall we? Today, we recognize that You've promised that your love will be with us forever and ever and ever. You've promised life to us forever and ever and ever. And for these dear little ones they got cheated out of the earthly part of this life. May we today remember that they weren't cheated of life. They got the same promise that we got. Except their non-earthly part started a lot sooner. So show us the openings in the sky, which always reminds us that they are there. And we will someday be given the opportunity and pleasure to join them as inheritors of your life, everlasting, forever and ever, and ever. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. I want to thank Reverend Eaton, Ed Frank, Ross Marizzo, Dr. Savidra, the Hoffman Estates Choir for coming out here today. And um, I just want to thank all of you for coming, too, as we remember those who unfortunately passed on, who had a much shorter life than many of us have been blessed with, but uh, they always live in our hearts. Thank you very much for coming. Thank everybody who played a role in building this great memorial. Thank you. Mm -hmm.